Let's take a nostalgic stroll through the world of lost food and drink from the past. How many of these will you remember? Instant refreshing orange drink in powder form. Yes, Bird's Appeal was orange juice that came in sachets. Just add the powder from the sachets to water and, hey presto, you had juice that supposedly tasted just like it had been freshly squeezed from oranges. Whether that was true or not, I don't know as I can't recall ever trying it. Do you remember Appeal? The Drifter, one of the most fondly recalled of all the chocolate bars that are sadly no longer with us. First launched back in 1980, Roundtree's Drifter was very much a rival to the Twix by Mars and proved to be very popular. In 2007, Nestle, who had long since taken over Roundtree, discontinued the Drifter before bringing it back in 2017. However, this return was sadly short-lived as just two years later, the drifter disappeared from shelves once more. A combination of milk and white chocolate sitting atop a crunchy biscuit base, Echo from Fox was a classic lunchbox type biscuit bar which disappeared way too soon. In addition to the milk chocolate version, Echo also came in orange and mint varieties and was rich and indulgent. Not surprising really when you consider Fox insisted that each bar contained no less than 76% chocolate. As recently as last year, a spokesperson from Fox stated that there were currently no plans to bring the Echo back. We're going to have to go further back in time for this entry. Force Wheat Flakes were first manufactured by the Force Food Company in the USA way back in 1901. After a year of average sales, the mascot Sonny Jim was introduced, a move which saw sales of the cereal skyrocket. Force Wheat Flakes were first imported to the UK in 1910 and eventually in 1954 were manufactured here. After a whopping 112 years of being a fixture on many breakfast tables across the Western world, the Force brand was discontinued in 2013 due to poor sales. It was briefly revived in the UK by Waitrose, but is now once again no longer available. When your chocolate assortment box is immortalised in a Beatles song, you know you've done something right. In 1968, George Harrison wrote a song for the Beatles' White Album called Savoy Truffle, with many of the lyrics being inspired by Good News Chocolate by Macintosh. Harrison wrote the song as a tribute to his chocolate-loving good friend and fellow guitar maestro Eric Clapton, who would often devour an entire box of Good News in one sitting.
Well, care for a little hanky panky, madam. I only offered you a little nibble. They're all at it. Munching new hanky panky from Pascal. Mind you, with those crunchy peanuts and those crispy corn puffs coated with all that caramel, <laughs> it's a right good nibble. You'll never know how good it is until you try it. We all like a bit of hanky panky now and again, don't we? You would think that, as they were so similar, Instant Whip and Angel Delight were products made by rival companies. However, they were actually both manufactured by birds, and while Angel Delight is still very much available today, Instant Whip is no more. One of those perfect Sunday tea time treats, Bird's Instant Whip was first launched back in 1955, 12 years before Angel Delight made its first appearance, and was a quick and very convenient way of making dessert. Flavour varieties of Instant Whip over the years included vanilla, chocolate, butterscotch, raspberry, banana, peach and orange. Which was your favourite? In every stately home and marble hall, there's jungle fresh available. So when neighbors come to call, Venus! They win, they win, they win! A strange one this, ketchups from Birdseye were an attempt to combine our love of chips and tomato sauce in one product. However, rather than being actual chips, these were instead more of a potato croquette, with the tomato ketchup that was injected in the middle attaining the temperature property of molten lava once cooked. A different idea certainly, but one that was destined to be a failure. I've just discovered lager at Terry's Chocolate Bar. Got chunks and hunks of Terry's taste are better bar by far. Oh, he's a lover, he's all right. Let's hope he gives us all a bite. It comes in milk or fruit and nut. I like them good and thick. So when I choose a chocolate bar, a lager's what I pick. Oh, he had a lot of bar. Yes, Hey, look, he's got a bar for me. Terry's lager, chunks and hunks of Terry's taste. In a similar way to Fox's Echo, Mingles from Bendix were a more recent addition to the nostalgia calendar than many of the items on this list. First introduced in 2002, each box of Mingles contained an assortment of individually wrapped mint chocolates. Varieties included a milk chocolate mint crisp, marbled dark and milk chocolate with a mint truffle centre, a dark chocolate with a mint fondant centre and more. Mingles were sadly discontinued in 2011. If you were around in the 50s and 60s, there's a good chance you remember the advertising slogan, you'll go nuts for the nuts you get in nooks. Launched by Roundtrees in 1959, the nooks was a chocolate bar filled with peanuts, toffee, and Nougat. Television adverts for Nooks in the early 60s featured someone who would go on to become a much-loved member of the carry-on team. See if you can identify him. Engine jive, jumping jive, knocks by kids in a bonfire jive. Go kids, go! Don't be slow! Bite that bar and you'll come alive! Crunch or chew, the bar for you is, is Nooks! Nuts bar, the 
Is this a taste of things to come? KP Artist Spaces have discovered a brand new module shape in tasty hot dog flavor. KP Artist Spaces, crispy corn snacks in your favorite flavors. Pickled onion, chutney, beef burger, and now new hot dog flavor. KP Artist Spaces, they're out of this world. The legendary Pan Yan pickle has taken on an almost mythological status these days, probably due to the fact that the original secret recipe for this fondly recalled pickle of the past was lost in a fire in the mid-2000s. While it is possible to try and recreate it from the list of ingredients on surviving jars, what is produced is just a pale imitation of the original. First produced by the McConaughey brothers in 1903, by the 1920s, Panyan had become the best-selling pickle in the world. It remained in production until 2002. In 2008, DJ Chris Evans launched an appeal to resurrect the brand, which led to current owners Premier Foods admitting that the recipe had been destroyed in a fire. When ricicles were discontinued in 2017, it wasn't due to a lack of sales or a dip in popularity. What actually sealed the fate of this popular breakfast cereal was its relatively high sugar content. While very similar to another Kellogg cereal which is still going strong, Rice Krispies, ricicles had an extra sugar coated frosting which unfortunately led to Kellogg's ceasing production in 2017. It seems in this day and age that we, as consumers, can't be trusted to make our own minds up as to what food we should or shouldn't eat. When I was overweight, I hated myself, always hiding behind a smile. But I also hated the idea of giving up bread. So I made Slimsia part of my calorie control diet. Slimsia's good tasty bread. Now I've plenty to smile about. Show them you're a Slimsia girl. Slim, slim, Slimsia girl. Mm, a Slimsia girl. One of the most fondly recalled of all lost chocolate products, treats were first launched by Mars in the UK in the 1960s. There were three main varieties, peanut, toffee and chocolate. Treats remained popular throughout the 70s and much of the 80s before they were sadly discontinued in 1988. Despite a brief return as a limited edition in 2009, treats are still unavailable in UK stores. However, in 2017, the treats brand was relaunched by a German company and can be purchased online. No lunchbox in the 1980s was fully complete without a united bar slotted in by the side of your cheese and ham sandwiches. First launched in 1979 by McVitie's, the United consisted of a crunchy biscuit base covered in milk chocolate. The iconic blue and white striped packaging is embedded in the memories of many of us who were around during the bar's heyday. In addition to the original, an orange variety was also available. Although sadly discontinued in the early 90s, the United name still invariably crops up whenever conversation turns to our favourite snacks of the past. When Walkers took over the Monster Munch brand in 1995, they spent the next few years introducing different flavour varieties to the already established lineup. 
In 2003, one of those new varieties was the infamous vanilla ice cream Monster Munch. Released to a mainly negative reaction, this unusual addition to the range was thankfully only a limited edition flavour, so only graced supermarket shelves for 16 weeks. Due to the vanilla ice cream theme, this was the only Monster Munch variety to be a sweet snack rather than savoury, with salt replaced by sugar. Did you ever try a packet of these? If so, what did you think? A seemingly permanent fixture at house parties everywhere during the 1970s, Watney's Party 7 is still fondly recalled by many today, whether you were old enough to drink it at the time or not. London-based brewery Watney's first launched the Party 7 in October 1968 at the retail price of 15 shillings, the equivalent of approximately £16 today. Because of its relatively good value, the Party 7 proved to be hugely popular and was perfect for those family get-togethers at home. The main issue with the Party 7 was how to open it. Many a 70s living room would be dripping with beer as a furious spray erupted from the mini hole in the top of the keg which had just been created by means of a hammer and screwdriver. Although the Watney's Party 7 was reintroduced as recently as 2020, it seems to have disappeared without trace once more. Although the original Yorkie bar is still going strong today, sadly the same cannot be said for the Yorkie peanut. A delicious combination of chocolate and roasted peanuts, this variation of the standard Yorkie bar is fondly recalled by many. It was reintroduced to stores in 2014, but only as a limited edition, which meant it would soon vanish from shelves once more. destroy the control center and the mastermind responsible. Zoom is ready. I'll try, Uncle Sam. We have less than 15 seconds to save London and perhaps the world. I found the hidden laboratory. Launch Lions Made Zoom immediately. Well done, Joe. Well done, Zoom. Zoom. Only sixpence from Lions Made. Obviously there are many other lost food and drink items that could be included in an A to Z list such as this. What are some of your nostalgic favourites that you wish were still around? Can anyone think of one for the letter X? Let me know in the comments section. If you enjoyed today's video, a little click on the thumbs up button is always very much appreciated. Feel free to subscribe to Stuview TV if you haven't already done so. As always, many thanks for watching and do join me next time for more nostalgic goodness.